Good evening, family. God bless you and praise the Lord. Welcome you this evening to our Bible class. Um, we're excited about the word of the Lord as we are each and every week. The Lord affords us the opportunity to get together and, and amen. Just break it open the word and get into the word of the Lord together. I want to thank all of you that were on morning prayer this morning. We had an awesome time. Awesome time. Sister Eunice brought an awesome word. Sister Denise blessed us in song. And trustee Marcus Harris took us to the throne in prayer. He prayed the word this morning. So we thank God for Sister Owens and the team, Sister Evelyn, always doing an awesome job. And it's just so good to have all of you on the line this morning. So God bless you for that. Listen, this past weekend, the Mighty Men of Valor did a drive through for the women. It was off the chain. Uh, First Lady was out of town, as you know, so I drove Mama Russell through. So it was totally awesome. God bless you, Deacon Larry, and uh, Rogers, Deacon Neal, and the team for doing an awesome job. Um, we had an awesome time, and it just feels good to be back doing some of the things that we've always been known for here at Greater Fabio, and that's the strong fellowship. So God bless you for that. Also, we want everybody to remember that coming up this weekend is our church picnic. Church picnic, I think it's from 11 to 2 at The Rock. So we want everybody, all of the members, we want you to come to the picnic. Enjoy it. Listen, you know, we talked about the women bringing the desserts. The church will furnish all of the food, but we want all the women and the men to bring your award-winning desserts. So uh, please, please make certain that you are there. We look forward to having a great time. I'm, I'm excited about it. First Lady, she's excited. We're just glad that we'll be able to have a picnic together. We haven't had a picnic in two years. It's been two years and 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 um, I just, I bless the Lord for us being able to do this. So we want to again welcome everybody and invite everybody to the picnic this week. On tomorrow night, of course, as we say each and every week, Salt and Light will Zoom. They'll have the children teaching them the word at 6 and 6.30. So I'm exhorting you to please have your children on the phone, uh, on the on the computers. They're going to be Zooming, so they'll be able to see each and every one of them. And so we're so excited about that. And listen, um, I want everybody to remember that um, intercessory prayer happens every Tuesday from 12 to 1230. Remember, every Tuesday from 12 to 1230. Um, the saints, they get together and they go forth and Sister Ely and the team, they do an awesome job. So we exhort you to be a part of that. Listen, we want you to be a part of everything that's happening here at the View with the Family. We had an awesome Mother's Day um, service this Sunday. I know a lot of you were away and traveling and doing different things like that. First Lady was with her mom. I'm just glad that we were able to celebrate Mother's Day and, and listen. Father's Day is coming up next month, so y'all get ready. Get the Sonic Boom ready. It's going to be Father's Day. Amen. At the view. Well, praise the Lord. Well, listen, we're excited about the word. We're, we're getting into the word, and I pray in Jesus' name that each and every one who's watching me today, I pray that you are blessed by the word uh, in Jesus' name. It's, it's going to be an awesome word today. And, and listen, I believe the Lord wants to say something to each and every one of us. Um, I, I, I want you to, uh, um, to just receive the word tonight. Amen. In Jesus name, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Make certain my phone is good where it does not disturb us. So let us pray and let us get into the word. Father, we love you. We praise you and we bless you tonight. We thank you that you are the giver of all gifts. And Father, we thank you for the love of God and we thank you for the peace of God that passes understanding. And Father, as we approach the word tonight, we humble ourselves so that we can receive what you have to say to us. So we ask in Jesus name that you just make, make plain the word tonight as I go forth. Pray that you make my tongue the pen of a ready writer ready to write the word upon the hearts of your people. And Father, I pray that the people will receive the word, mix faith with it. And it will cause us to prosper as a result. We bless you and we praise you. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, as we as we get, um, get into the word tonight, I want everybody to re be reminded and, and to stay focused on order. As, as uh, Trustee Harris was praying this morning, he started praying about the order 
that we've been teaching on. And I want us to make certain that as a family, that we are walking in the wisdom of God and we're walking in the order of God. Now, let me say this. There are certain areas of our lives that we have better ordering sometimes than others. And what I exhort you to do there is, is just find the word that pertains to you in that area. Get into the word and let the word get into you. Not only let it get into you, let it marinate in you. Let it rest in you. Let it take root in you. And when the word of the Lord takes root on the inside of you in a particular area, it causes the light to come on. And when the light comes on, it allows you then to get things in order. You may not realize this, but a lot of people that you think are just out of order, they're in darkness. And when you're in darkness, there are certain things you can't see. You just can't. But the Bible says the entrance to God's word, give it light. And when that light comes on, it enables us to put things in order. So, so members of Greater Fairview, I pray in Jesus' name that as we've been teaching over this, uh, on this since January, that you've been getting things in order, that you've been pulling things in order, that you've been adjusting things, you've been tweaking things, and you've been doing what it is that you need to do to get things in order. And so tonight, what I want to talk about is, um, the Lord has led me this way, I want to talk about wisdom. Because so many times, things that we see out of order, they're out of order, and we think they're out of order sometimes because people are bad, sometimes because people are just rebellious, sometimes people can be just totally unwise. And so tonight we want to talk about wisdom. And listen, I know when I was young, as a, as a, at a very early age, I prayed for wisdom. I asked the Lord to give me wisdom. But when I was young, I thought you couldn't have wisdom unless you were old. I ain't talking about 60, 70. I'm talking about 100. I used to think if you didn't have, if you weren't old, you couldn't have wisdom. But that's not true. That's, that's not true. And so it's essential for the believer to walk in wisdom. Because if you don't walk in wisdom, then you'll be uptight in some areas. Or you'll be unwise in some areas. And either way, it'll cause you to be exposed. Now, what do I mean when I say exposed? What'll happen is, it'll cause us to not represent God in the highest in a particular area. So it's very important that as Christians, that we seek wisdom, that we walk in wisdom, that we, that we, that we study wisdom, that we pray for wisdom, that we... We, we, we grab wisdom around the neck and hold on to wisdom because if you don't, the enemy will cause you to stumble. Why? Because when you're not operating in wisdom, you're being unwise. When you're being unwise, usually you'll be out of order. And so tonight, we're going to talk about wisdom. So, so the word wise within itself means having or showing experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Having or showing experience, knowledge, and good judge, judgment. So keep in mind, wisdom itself is not knowledge. If you can be, you can be, you can have uh, uh, um, so much knowledge until you don't know what to do with it and be the most unwise person there is. Because if you don't apply the knowledge right, then it will cause you to operate as an unwise individual. But wise means having or showing experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So, so um, wisdom kind of sounds the same. The quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Listen, wisdom, though, is, is the quality of being wise. The quality of being wise. So, what you don't want to find in your Christian life is you don't want to find yourself unwise. You don't want to find yourself unwise. Why? Because when the enemy finds you unwise in an area, that's where he sets up shop. He sets up shop in an area where you're unwise. You've heard people say if a dog comes to your house and you feed him, he'll keep coming back. Well, a lot of times when you operate and you're unwise, 
that what you begin to do is you begin to feed the enemy. Sometimes you don't even realize you're feeding him, but you can be so unwise that you'll begin to feed the enemy. Now, we talked about order. Order is the arrangement or disposition of people or things in relation to each other according to a particular sequence, pattern, or method. You Listen, your experiences in life, your experiences in life and your knowledge and the things that you have been through in life will cause you to put things in order. Let me give you an example. If you go through something that's really, really, really bad, really, really, really bad, you got caught. And, and and you went through something really bad. Well, as soon as you can get both feet on the ground, what you generally do is you go and you change that. You bring order to it. Why? You bring order to it because of the knowledge and the experience that you gained out of what you went through. So you then put things in order to prevent the same type issues you just went through. So, 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 we want to make certain tonight that 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 as we talk about this, that each and every one of us understand wisdom and that we're striving to get wisdom. On the first scripture tonight, I want you to turn to Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16, and we're going to look at uh, two verses there. Because what I want us to understand is a lot of people seek a lot of knowledge. But I'm going to tell you something. You got it. And wisdom is almost, to me, let me tell you how wisdom is versus knowledge. Wisdom to knowledge in the world of singing. If a person says the, the word here is Lord, and, and then it's the word Lord, but you sing it, this is the pitch. It's in this key and this is the pitch. Well, another person can know how to say Lord, but they can't do the pitch and they can't get in the key. They know what the word is. They know where it goes in the song, but it's not right. When you see a person that has knowledge that operate unwise in a matter, it kind of stands out like a person who's singing the wrong note in a song. Okay, so so a person that has the knowledge and, and, and they're operating unwise, sometimes my heart kind of breaks for them because I'm saying you're halfway there, but you, I just need you, yeah, I just need you to get it. So let's look at Proverbs 16, verse 16 and 17. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? And to get understanding rather than to be chosen than silver. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way, preserve it his soul. It is better to get wisdom than gold. Most of the people that we know, most of the people that we're around, the society that we're around, the society is saying, go for the gold. Go for the gold. The only thing that people are trying to do right now is get more money. They're just trying to get more money. And I don't care what shape you find them in. They think that more money will solve their issue. There are families. They got two children, three children, five children, one child. They think that they could get that child some more stuff. If they could get some more money to get that child some more stuff, then the child will have a better life. Sometimes your child may need less stuff because what you're equating is you're equating so many times stuff with success. But the Bible says here it's better to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather than to be chosen than silver. So so if you got a, if you got if you got wisdom and you got understanding, the Bible said that it can be better than gold and silver. Well, let me flip that around to you. If you can get wisdom and understanding, you can get the gold and the silver. But if you just go after the gold and the silver and get it, the gold and the silver can't get you wisdom, can't get you understanding. Understanding and wisdom can get you the gold and the silver, but the gold and the silver can't get you the wisdom and the understanding. So what am I saying? I'm saying that there need to be two things happening at the same time. You need to be seeking wisdom and working hard too. But look at what verse 17 says. It says, the highway 
of the upright is to depart from evil. I'm confused. I'm confused because what you're saying here is the upright is evil there. No. What he's saying is the highway of the upright is to depart, which means in order to depart from something, that's something that you had to have been a part of. And so as a Christian, when you operate in the wisdom of God, at some point you come to the knowledge and find out, wait, this isn't right. My company isn't right. What I'm saying and doing isn't right. All I'm doing is trampling over people to do this. I'm, I'm misusing people to do that. But the Bible says that the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. And so he said, he that keepeth his way. He that keepeth his way. The Lord is a keeper, but how does the Lord keep? The Lord keep what it is. He sustains what it is that you refrain from. Lord, I'm, he'll sustain you. He'll aid you. He'll do all this. But at the same time, there's something that you have to do. What enables you to do that? Wisdom. Wisdom. Listen, you've changed. You move from your old house. You move from your old friends. You got a new walk. You got a new talk. You got a new this and you got a new that. But every time I see you, everybody you with, they're the same old folk. They don't love Jesus. They don't like Jesus. They don't like your walk and until you don't talk about that to them. They like the old you. You need to let some of them go. Why? Because the highway of the righteous and the upright is to depart from evil. Listen, listen. This word in the in the in the in the Hebrew from this particular passage is called hukma. Hukma. And what it means is it means to be skillful. It means to be skillful, skillful in war, skillful in, in administration, skillful in war, skillful in administration. So so sometimes when you when you start tweaking and cleaning up things in your life and things in your house and your affairs, sometimes people will resent you. They'll say you think you something because you're making changes. No, listen, if, 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 if the spirit of the Lord comes on the inside of you. And he's called you from one place to another. And you choose to live a different way. Let the folks say what they want to say. You come on out and you operate in wisdom. But don't get over into God and then hide. What am I saying? Don't get over to God and hide and then not be able to minister to people. But what you do is you get over to him and allow him to work on you. Allow his word to change you. Take that highway. Depart from iniquity, depart from evil, depart from all of that, and become skillful. I like skillful people. Uh, shrewdness. I mean, I, I like people who can who can handle themselves. You know, there are some people they think they think being lowly and humble is to let you walk over them. And it's not. It's it's not, it's not, it's not called you don't be haughty and all of that. But the wisdom here is, is that. In the life of a believer, you have to understand what is it, how is it, when is it that God wants me to pursue him, to pursue his word, to pursue the things of God, to forget about little old me, how I am, how I was. I have to walk in wisdom. And one of the things that you have to keep in mind is, is, is that when you begin to walk in wisdom, you can rightly divide some stuff. You can rightly divide some stuff. And it's amazing. I can sit with somebody and a person can throw us a pitch or a note to sing, as I used earlier. And, and give me three of us there. Two people can hear it and sing it. The other person, they can hear it, but they can't hear it. Meaning they hear what you're saying, but they can't hear the pitch. And, and another example of, of no wisdom is almost like, if I know during COVID, for example, some people lost their smell. So... You're cooking some fried chicken. You got on too much cologne. And they're around you and they're just smiling. They can't smell any of it. It's right there, but they can't smell it. That's the way it is when a person is unwise. There are things that are right around them. 
that's right, that's accurate, and it seems like, why can't you get it? If a person can't smell, we don't ask them how my cologne smell because they can't smell. Well, wisdom is like that. And one of the things that you want to keep in mind is this. There are some people that live, and they have bad wisdom, actually have no wisdom. For example, if a person lives like they're never going to die, then they live like they're never going to die. They 77 years old. Oh, I don't know about this Jesus thing. Well, then I hope you got some life insurance to be, to live like you're not going to die is unwise because if you go to the scripture, the scripture will tell you that you're going to leave here. But when you see people live like that, they're unwise. When you see people raise a baby, I said this Sunday, their little, 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 little Chester, like Chester is never going to get grown. Like they're going to freeze Chester in time and he's going to stay one. No, you got to put some, some morals in that child. You got to put some discipline in that child. So when that child gets older, the child will understand things. But if you don't raise the child, the child will grow up unwise. Why? Because you didn't put anything in. Now, let me say this to you. You can open a bank account at Trustmark and put $5 in, $20. Why would you go back and try to draw out $5,000? You didn't put it in there. Wisdom, wisdom enables you to put in what you need to put in, to invest into people, to invest into situations, to, to look into matters and invest in them so you can withdraw from them. You can withdraw from them. Um, relationships. Some people, everybody they've been friends with all their lives, they deceived them, they betrayed them, they didn't walk in wisdom, and, and, and all of a sudden, now they're 65, and, and the person they've been friends with longest is two years. Unwise. Unwise. So what, I, what I'm talking about tonight is I need us to use wisdom. Our world right now is not saying use wisdom. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to look at Ephesians 5, verse 15 and 17. 15 through 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. And so sometimes in our world right now, if you operate in godly wisdom, sometimes the world will condone you. Godly wisdom sometimes will make you almost look like you're losing. But in order for you to make sure things are in order, you got to have the wisdom of God. You got to have the wisdom of God. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. And the word of the Lord reads then, read, read thus. See then that you walk circumspectly, circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, no, let's stop right there. Be redeeming the time for the days. The day is what? The days are what? The days are evil. Let's go to read 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Listen, verse 16 tells us redeeming the times because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. The stuff that's happening right now in our society is evil. There's a lot of evil going on. A lot of evil going on. But the Bible tells us, wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Listen, when it comes down to understanding the will of the Lord, what the word of the Lord means and, and what the Lord will have us to do, you can't do it apart from his word. Don't get so wrapped up in what's going on with you that you miss what's going on in the whole world. Sometimes when we have been unwise, and listen, all of us at some point have been unwise, and then we went through something, and what we went through caused us to wise up. We went through something, it caused us to wise up. And so, and so the Bible says here that, 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 that we walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. We need to walk as 
the wise. We need to walk as the wisdom of the Lord is upon us. If the spirit of the Lord is upon us, then we need to operate in wisdom. Why? Because we're walking out God. We're walking out the character of God. And so in our lives, oh yeah, you're going to have stuff happen. You're going to have trip. You're going to have all that stuff happen. But how do you handle life? How do you manage life? How do you put life in order? All of it is going to be based on you understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, let me say this to you. If you do not understand what the will of the Lord is, your life is already out of order. Already out of order. Your life is already out of order. And if we allow the world to teach us what our agenda should be here on earth, we're out of order. We are out of order. But the Bible says here this, that we're not to walk circumspectly, not as fools. The opposite of somebody that's wise would be a fool. You remember the parable about the man that had the barns and he got so much. And he said, I'm going to tear down my barns and I'm going to be a bigger barns. And, 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 and then all of a sudden he heard, thou fool, this night, thou soul is required in the judgment. And who shall these things be? Okay, listen. If everything, let me tell you unwise, if everything that the Lord blesses you with, you grab it and put a lid on it and sit on it and you don't give him back his, his portion and you don't bless the less fortunate and you don't give out of it, you're unwise. Why? Because all that you can make in 20 years can be gone in one night. It can be gone in one day. That's unwise. But see, listen, when you use wisdom and you appreciate and receive the blessings of the Lord. And you're not slothful, but you're actually doing what you need to do. And, 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 and you're busy and you're doing what the Lord has told you to do. With his wisdom, his blessings, and his anointing on you, when God blesses you, you are then in a position to bless people, to bless your family, to bless generations. And not just try and heap stuff up on you just so you can look good in front of everybody else. That's not the way. So, so what am I saying here? I'm saying is when you understand the wisdom of the thing is, the wisdom for us is for us to walk upright, for us to walk circumspectly, for us not to be hiding, for us not to have people wonder, oh, those poor Christians, oh, I think I need to take them a dollar or two. No, the Lord wants us blessed. If the cattle on 10,000 hills belong to him and we're his children, we should be blessed. But listen, our focus is not on the stuff. Our focus is on the people. Our focus is on the Lord. Our focus is on doing his will. And so I want to say this tonight. You may have areas in your life where you say, Pastor, I just haven't walked in wisdom right there. It's not too late. It's not too late. You need to make certain that you have things in order. But listen, if there's an area of your life that you haven't walked in wisdom, it's absolutely not too late. I want you to turn to James uh, chapter one. We're going to look at James here tonight because I, I, I realize that so many people are out of order because they don't, they don't understand how and the fact that they should be walking in wisdom. And I'm going to tell you something. It's hard to, to have things in order when you're unwise. When you are skillful in things, it's hard. It's hard to have things in order when, when, when you're in the dark. And so you have to come out of the dark. I mean, I mean, I was talking to somebody the other day and they was like, Ooh, my pastor just hoop and holler at me. And when I leave church, I don't know no more than I did when I got there. When I go to Bible, I said, listen, listen, don't be a fool. Get you some wisdom. Put yourself in a position where you can get the word. The Lord will lead you on how you need to do that. But you need the word of the Lord operating in your life. You need the wisdom of God in your life. But listen, you can't separate the wisdom from the word. Because the world's wisdom, you don't want it. It's earthly, sensual, and devilish. And I talked about this the other Sunday. That the, the wisdom from above is first pure, peaceable, gentle. Pure, peaceful, gentle. I mean, it's, 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 it's full of mercy. It's without partiality, without hypocrisy. 
I mean, it's a, there are a lot of great things about the godly kind of wisdom. But listen, if as saints, if you're not operating in wisdom, then what you could be operating in, you could be operating in some knowledge. But without the ability to skillfully use that, that knowledge that you have, it'll cause you to be unwise. But James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8. Let's read this. If any of you lack wisdom, if any of you lack wisdom, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally, liberally, and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. For a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. If any of you lack wisdom, if any of you act wisdom, let him ask of God. Let me look at this again. Let him ask of God. Let him ask of God. Let him ask God. Don't, don't go ask your brother. Don't go ask your pastor. Let him ask God, which give to all men liberally and upbraid if not. Listen, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Why, why would that scripture be put there? Let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Sometimes when a person realizes that they're out of order or that they don't have the wisdom that, that, that they need to, to operate in a particular area, what happens sometimes is the enemy, he creeps in. The enemy will creep in or a person will realize, for example, they're raising their children and Lord, this ain't going right. Instead of them getting before the Lord, asking for wisdom, they get in fear. No, you got to ask the Lord and you got to believe God. And, 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 and the other thing I want you to keep in mind is here, this wisdom word wisdom is, is in the New Testament. It's Greek. It's Sophia. The word Sophia, and what it means is, it says, brought and full of intelligent, intelligence, used of the knowledge of the very diverse matters. So, so when a person would, 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 would bring me something, there were times a person would bring me something and they'd say, you know, this is, what do you think about this? Well, we got this matter going on. And I would say, you know what? I'm a little ignorant on that right now. I need you to shed some light on that. Help bring me up to speed. Well, it were just meant without the knowledge of something. But once I got the knowledge of it and I understood what was going on, I could make a fair assessment. There are things now that'll come up and I'll hear them and I don't know all the details. But what I do is, based on what I hear and the wisdom that I have, I'll make a fair, a lot of times, middle of the road assessment. I'll say, listen, I don't know all the details of that right there, but based on what I hear, that's not right. Based on what I hear, right? But that's based on what I hear. That's not right. Because see, what you learn in life is this. is usually a lot of times once you get on the surface of a matter, it may not be the full extent of the matter. And what you have to do as a Christian is you have to understand wisdom. For example, if your child comes in and the teacher says your child did one thing. And you ask your child and your child said I did something else. They misheard. They have been misunderstood me. They hurt me. That's fine. And then two months later, another teacher comes and said, the child did this. And you ask the child, the child said, I didn't do that. And then the assistant principal calls you. Later and said, the child did this. And the child said, I did that. After those incidents, if you still believe in that child, you're unwise. You're unwise. Why? Because my grandma used to say, everybody not telling the same lie. But the truth of the matter is this. As you learn your children, you assess them and you learn just from their behaviors. You learn from their mannerism when something is not right. And you got three children. If somebody came and told you this about Jack, you say, oh, yeah, Jack said it. If they came and told you about Timmy, you'll say, no, I don't know about Timmy now. Let me look into that because Timmy may not have said that. But Jack, yeah, Jack said it. I believe him. I believe him. Why? Because Jack, Jack. 
quick temper. Jack got a quick tongue. Well, what am I saying here? What I'm saying is in your life, if you're going to get things in order, you got to know what the word of the Lord says. The devil showed up to Adam and Eve in the garden, showed up to Eve and said, for the Lord has said, and that wasn't true. For the Lord has said, when Jesus was in the wilderness fasting, the devil said, for it is written. So when, that, when, when you're going through a matter or you're in the middle of a situation and you begin to hear something, you see, if you know your Lord, you'll know what sounds like him and what doesn't. But, 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 but sometimes you'll hear stuff in the middle of a situation and you'll say, no, that ain't God there. It ain't God. That's not God. I remember one time somebody preached and they were preaching and they began to teach something. I, something I'd never heard. I'd never heard it. And my spirit would not, I couldn't receive it. I'm like, mm -mm, that's not right. That's not right. And I went later, went back, I studied it and it was not right. But what I'm saying is to operate in the wisdom of God. You have to study. You have to learn. You have to avail yourself. You have to realize that I'm not it. I'm just not the stuff. I'm just not this and everything just doesn't revolve around me. No, no. Because see, when you get things in order, you know that you apply the word first, not you. Things out of order. Some people, they would say, Lord, I didn't try it all I can. And now, Lord, I'm going to give it to you. Well, you could ask me about that before you got started. You could ask me because, listen, without him, you can do nothing. And whatever you acknowledge him in, that's where you're going to find him active in your life. And so instead of you getting yourself worn out, tired, beat down, and then you're going to turn it over to him to see if he can handle it, he could have handled it from the beginning. You could have gone to bed and slept that night. But the wisdom, as we walk in the wisdom, the word Sophia means, listen, broad and, broad and full intelligence used of the knowledge of diverse matters. There is a wisdom that belongs to men and there is a wisdom or supreme intelligence such as belongs to God. And what you've got to keep in mind is God has made it available for us to be recipients and partakers of his nature. And when you are partaker of his nature, then you're a partaker of his intellect, his intelligence. And so he doesn't want us unwise. And sometimes we operate in matters like we never heard it before. And I'm not just talking about putting fires out. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying in order for us to have things in order, for us to have the ability to put things in order, we got to have wisdom. We must have the word of the Lord. We must know what the word of the Lord says. We must know what God's way of handling this thing is. First, acknowledge him first. First in everything. First. And not wearing you out and then you find like, oh Lord, you know, every time I try to handle it on my own, at the end, I feel I realize I have to turn it over to you. Well, stop trying to handle it on your own. Just get the Lord involved up front. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. And another thing about the wisdom of God is there are things that you don't know that's brewing. And if you're not operating in the wisdom of God, by the time you find out, sometimes you'll find out that where you are at the same time. Um... I want us to understand that when 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 we as as believers, when we begin to minister to people, we begin to talk to people, people begin to encounter us and interact with us. Then what happens is when people begin to interact with us, what begins to happen is, is they begin to interact and and and, and really experience God in a way that they've never experienced him. They begin to experience God in a way that they have never been able to experience him, but only through their interactions with us. And so as a Christian, people should see us with our stuff together. They should see us with our stuff together. 
Oh, Pastor, I just don't know what I'm going to do. Listen, stop waiting until your back is up against the wall. You need to walk in wisdom every day. Every day. I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. And we're going to begin at verse 1. Proverbs 2 verse 1. And I'm telling you something about this wisdom. Once you begin to operate in wisdom, listen, the devil does not like you operating in wisdom. He does not. Why? Because what happens is when you operate in wisdom, you're putting things in order. And the devil wants you out of order. He wants your children out of order. Out of order. I remember when my mom used to work back in the day, my mom had a, a, a co-worker and the co-worker told her, the co-worker had a child and the child's bedroom had padlocks on it. And my mom was asking her, how do you let that child live in your house with padlocks on the door? They deserve their privacy. Well, they get privacy. But if they live at this address, the taxes and the mortgage and the bills are paid by me. So you get your privacy, but keep in mind that your privacy here is limited. Well, the person told my mom, you're wrong for getting into your children's affairs and, and finding out what's going on with them. We were like, how old? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18? Well, if my mom and dad don't get into it, who's going to get into it? So mom was operating wisdom. That person, they were unwise. And all oh, they talked about them and they talked about my mom and they talked about my mom because they felt like whatever their children had behind the doors, it was their business. Unwise. But one day, everybody say one day. Uh -huh. One day, when your front door got kicked in and, and your bedroom door, I'm going to say your bedroom door, to your son's room, got kicked in with all the padlocks on it. They hauled all kind of drugs out of that room, out of that house. And, and all of a sudden, that parent looked like somebody had sucked all the life out of them. They were just like, they were distraught. Why? Because they couldn't believe. Well, trust, but verify. They couldn't believe that their child, well, I got a question. How many, let me just talk about wisdom. How many children got three padlocks on the door and the only thing they got in a room is their Monopoly game? You got to operate in wisdom. You got to operate in wisdom. Do you know how many young people got cell phones now and they're Googling and YouTube and stuff that they have no business and their parents have no clue? No clue. They need a phone. They do, but they need some supervision. You don't give them a, just give them a gun too. Because what they're seeing and expo being exposed to can kill them. But that woman, she felt like her child needed to be respected as an adult. And that was their space. Yes. But when you put a padlock on a door in my house, five more don't have to kick it down. I'm going to kick it down. I'm going to kick it down. And so why, why am I saying this? What I'm saying is this. My mom was talking wisdom and the person, they were unwise and they couldn't see it. After that experience, they gained some wisdom. So let me say this. Some stuff that's being given away free, go ahead and take it. Go ahead and take it. Don't wait until you go through it to learn it. Listen. I just don't, I just don't believe it. I just, you can't tell me nothing, okay? But life has a way of telling you some stuff that'll leave a tattoo on you. Life has a way, if you won't get it free, life has a way of showing you, and when you go tell somebody else, you'll shout while you're telling them. But some stuff, you need to open yourself up to the Lord and allow the Lord to pour his wisdom into you. Let's look at Proverbs chapter two, verse one. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge 
and lifted up thy voice for understanding. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. My son, if you receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. Listen, the word of the Lord is quick and it's powerful. Not just to get you together, but it's quick and it's powerful. And listen, and listen. He said, so, so, so that thou incline thy ear to wisdom. That's an implication here that wisdom comes out of the word. And thine heart to understanding. And apply thine heart to understanding. Lord, I want to know you. I want to know your will. I want to know your way. Lord, I want to know your heartbeat. Lord, I want to know the things that's on your heart and that's on your mind. Father, I want to know what your word says about this. And what, what, what happens here is when you become rich in the Lord, when you become rich in the word, listen, all money can do is to then help you get some stuff. But when you're rich already, because see, there's treasure. The word of the Lord is a treasure. That's why the Bible tells us to search the scriptures, to study, to show yourself approved. Why is it that I want wisdom so? Why is it that I want understanding so? Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord we're talking about here? We're talking about reverence. As I begin to know God's word, as I begin to know God, I begin to know how to reverence him. What am I doing then? I'm putting things in order. What you mean putting things in order? All of a sudden, I stop saying stupid stuff, saying I'm joking. I stopped saying, whoo, I said I was going to stop cussing. I just got through saying, hallelujah, glory to God. Now I'm cussing you. But when I really understand his word and I understand his way of doing things, it helps me to understand my reverence to him. Your body is not your own. So why would you cuss with my tongue, says the Lord? Uh-huh. Why would you do this? See, the, the wisdom of God will help you understand how to properly reference him. How to properly reference him. It's amazing when the police, I mean, when the president gets off the plane at Air Force One, they all salute him every time. Ten times a day he passes by. They salute him. Why? Because they're acknowledging him. They're referencing him. Well, the Bible says that our God, he's a present help. He said he'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. So, you get things in order because you understand the word and then people begin to have problems with you because you're always saying this. You're always doing that. You're always acting like this. No, life is, listen, life is more than a two-piece from churches on a pepper and a good shot on Sunday morning. Life is more than that. Life is more than that. And we got to understand that. So how do I, how do I get, how do I know God to, to reverence him? I stay in his word. I keep my ear inclined to his wisdom. I search for understanding about his word. Why? Because the better I know him, the better I know me, and the better I understand my relationship with him. So we got to have that wisdom because we got to put things in order. We're letting people totally disrespect God when we allow them to totally disrespect us. Totally disrespect God. I got on the elevator one day and everybody was cussing like sailors. And all I said was, praise the Lord. And you, they couldn't wait till we got to the eighth floor so they could get off. I said, praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. Everybody hushed. And what we're doing is we're giving room because we feel like we have the room. But I'll say this. When you, when you receive his word and you incline your ears unto, unto his instruction and his understanding, the Bible says, then 
when you understand the fear of the Lord. And listen, the Lord, verse 6 says, The Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. What's coming out of his mouth? His word. His word. That's why a person can hear the word, really hear the word one time, and then just spring up like, oh my God, what is that? Oh my God, that's different. No, most times we like to be lukewarm. I ain't on fire for the Lord, and I ain't cold for the devil. I'm just in the middle of the road. Well, Jesus said, I'd rather you, uh-huh, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Because, see, when you're lukewarm, you know. So why aren't we on fire for the Lord? Because, see, sometimes we can get so busy with the Lord's business. With, uh, look, I'm, uh, mm, 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 I don't care what you do for the Lord. He wants you on fire for him. On fire for him. And so, and so this is what I love about God and, and saints. When we really go through something in our lives and God really brought us out, then we are wiser in those areas. And it's interesting. Our testimony totally changes. Well, that's how he is all the way around. That's one thing you went through. Somebody else went through something else. Somebody else went through something else. Somebody else went through something else. And somebody through something else. Why didn't the Lord take you through all of that? He didn't need you. He didn't listen. He didn't need to allow you to go through all of that. You went through a season. But when everybody at the church get together and everybody testify about what they'd have been through, it displays the whole personality of God. He attacks somebody's mind, somebody's physical body, somebody's child, somebody's spouse, somebody's job, somebody's parent, somebody's reputation. You go on and on, somebody's integrity. And everybody come together with a testimony. When they get finished telling the testimony, oh my God, what kind of man is this? But don't you allow the enemy to cause you to operate out of order because you don't understand the word. And you know, I would have more of the word if pastor had 20 more minutes on Sunday. No, what are you doing while you're at home? Two people called me this morning about their daily meditation book. They sent me a text. One called me, one sent me a text. One said, Pastor, thank you so much for our book. It just blesses me. Amen. Are you reading the, are you reading the devotion, the dedication? Are you seeking his word? How are you doing it? How are you doing it? Because what I do, I got to get, listen, I got to get the word, more of the word in me. I got to get the word in me. I got to understand better. I got to have wisdom better. And so wisdom will set you apart because five people can be sitting there and hear the same thing. And then you'll speak and you'll be like, hmm, that sounds different. What happened when Jesus came on the scene? They said, never before have we heard a man that's, oh my God, his speech is different. He, he messed him up. Solomon, operating in the wisdom of God. Wisdom helps you with order. Our last scripture for tonight, Colossians 4. We may have gone here, but I want to go back here. And I want to look at something else. I want to look at the, this part 6. Colossians chapter 4. And we're looking at verse 5 and 6. It says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Who we'll says, Son, in the word of the Lord is blessed. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. You got to walk in wisdom. Towards them that are without. Without what? Towards them that are without. And then interesting, right after that he says, let your speech be always with grace. How many times do we open our mouth and what we say is not grace? Our speech should be with grace. So what do we say grace is? We said grace is God's empowering presence. When you open your mouth and you utter words, 
Do your words empower the person or do your words tear down a person? The words should always be seasoned with empowerment. Do your words build up or do they? I'm just telling the truth. They may know me. I'm a straight shooter. Shut up. You unwise. Shut up and go get the word of the Lord in your mouth. And when you open your mouth, let people hear Jesus. The woman found in adultery. Jesus right on the ground. They said, according to the law of Moses, she should be stoned. Jesus, he said, he that is without sin. Wisdom, let him cast the first stone. He that is among you without sin, let him cast the first stone. And Jesus already knew he was the only one there without sin. And when they started leaving one by one, Jesus said, where are your accusers? She said, I have none. He said, neither do I accuse you. Wisdom. But isn't it interesting? We've been quoting that now for how long? Your words need to minister grace. Jesus could have said, look at you. You done got caught in adultery. This ain't your first time. And it ain't your second. We let his words minister grace. And then he says, let your speech be seasoned with salt. Seasoned. How many of you hate bland food? Hate bland stuff. But yet it still will give a person. Why? Because if you don't understand the reference of God the right way, You'll deal with people as they're there, nobody, and turn around and lift your hands up to him. And you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. See, understanding the fear of the Lord means how to treat your brethren. How to treat them that are without. How to treat anybody. And so, and so he says, let your speech be always with grace. When is, when is it not to be with grace? Never, because he said always with grace. And seasoned with salt. Listen, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. If that's not wisdom, how do I answer? How do I answer? Well, my speech should be seasoned with salt. But what, are, what about how I feel right now? Well, it really doesn't matter. Because see, what happens is, if I don't speak with grace and, and, and my words seasoned with salt, my words are going to be out of order. They're going to be out of order. Roll rage. Pop, pop, pop. Don't you see me? Pop, pop, pop. Can you drive? Pop, pop, pop. And what do I do? When people pull over in front of me, I said, all right, Miss Willis. Y'all remember Miss Willis. Miss Willis would get out and leave her keys in the car, the car on, uh, uh, doors locked, and not even in a park. When they pull around, I say, all right, Miss Willis, praise the Lord. Come on, Miss Willis. And then I pull up in the parking lot, I see somebody, they park, and I could have gotten that. So look how Miss Willis parked. You're not going to get me out. You're not getting me to, to come out there. I'm not doing that. So, Miss Willis and Chester. Chester, I know you see me. Praise the Lord. And this is what I asked somebody the other day. I said, what if that person in the car, you just screamed and, and cursed? What if they had a seizure? What if they had a stroke? What if this happened or what if that happened? They'd be like, oh, I didn't think about that. Stop thinking about you. When you open your mouth, let the Lord out. It's the word for you tonight. Whenever you open your mouth, if you ain't going to let the Lord out your mouth, shut up. Keep it closed. But when you get ready to open your mouth, let Jesus, let the wisdom of God come out that you'll know how to answer every man every time, regardless of what they ask you. If you're not in wisdom, you're out of order. Father, we bless you and praise you and thank you for the word tonight. Father, thank you for the wisdom of God. We receive it in Jesus' name. And Father God, we commit ourselves to walk in it. Father, those that are without wisdom, I, I ask in Jesus' name that you will stir them up. That they'll begin asking for your wisdom and that you'll give to them as you give to all men liberally. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you're watching tonight and you say, Pastor, listen, this sounds good, but I don't even have Jesus. Well, the only wisdom you can have is an is a, is a earthly wisdom. He died that you might have life. And if you've never received him, tonight is a mighty good night to receive him. I want you to pray with me. Everybody agree. God in heaven, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He was born of a virgin. 
crucified on the cross, buried in a tomb, and raised with all power. He now resides at the right hand of the Father. Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior, and I invite you to come into my heart and live inside of me for the rest of my days. Thank you, Lord, that I'm saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, give us a call, a text, reach out to us here at the church. We want to get some information to you. Listen, I pray that you were blessed by the word tonight. Listen, we must walk in the wisdom of God. If we're going to maintain order or get things in order, we have to know God's way of doing things. Listen, it's time for us to sow. Father, thank you for every gift and every giver. Thank you that you give us bread to eat, seed to sow, and you multiply our seed song as we cast our bread upon the water. Thank you that it comes back to us on every wave. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, why don't you repeat after me? I'm moving to a new level in my living because I'm moving to a new level in my giving. I expect nothing but the best from my God. And his best includes a threefold blessing. Increase, overflow, and favor. All three all right with me. Amen. Why don't you go ahead and so listen, I pray that you were blessed by the word. Remember to have your salt and light members on tomorrow at 6 and 6.30. And listen, don't forget the picnic Saturday at the Rock at 11, from 11 to 2. I pray that we see you there. Father, we bless you and we praise you and we thank you for tonight. Thank you for the word. Father, as we leave this place, but not your presence, may you love your grace and your peace continue to be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You do, you're dismissed. Have a great night.